also on eBay I saw this um, 30 volt uh, 5 amp constant voltage constant current source for a very cheap price like under five dollars shipped and uh, had a dual display displayed the voltage and then displayed the current below it um, these things are quite common on uh, eBay and uh, claimed that they had uh, current down to uh, 0 0.01 amps and um, and voltage to 0 0.01 volts on the displays and and the uh, percentage of error was pretty decent so I thought why not I can't believe they can even manufacture something at this price so I give it a try and um, when I received the unit I tested it out on the bench and uh, was quite amazed that it performed pretty well it was a very small unit uh, the display actually it took up uh, majority of its uh, volume but in uh, trying it uh, I found that okay it was really neat it worked but it it wasn't easy to get connected it, it wasn't user friendly got to have a lot of jumpers on it then you got to use little miniature screwdrivers to tweak the 21 turn pots that were on it and uh, so I thought I wonder if I could m modify this unit to make it a lot more user friendly and do it cheaply. I mean, it already is dirt cheap to begin with, so I'm starting out nice. So I took a real good look at the unit, and I noticed that um, there was a top board and a bottom board, and the bottom board seemed to contain the regulators and most of that part of the circuit. The top board seemed to be mostly the um, uh, the meters. And then in between them, what, what held them together was four um, metal uh, spacers with metal screws and uh, and I noticed I was looking closely at the circuitry and uh, the circuit boards and it looked like the uh, the pad there was pads on the top and the bottom between the where the uh, spacer would go in so they meant the spacer to conduct electricity so the electricity was being conducted from the bottom board to the display board and possibly back again, who knew. Uh, so I knew that if I took the boards apart, I was going to have to uh, bind those points with wires. That was one thing. And the wires would have to be fairly significant to take the place of the low resistance of the short spacers. But uh decided to go ahead and give that a try. So I... Uh, I put four wires, one on each corner, kept them out of the way of the holes uh, that the screws had gone through because there really aren't any other mounting spots on the boards. So if I was going to mount these boards to either the front panel or the bottom panel of the uh, meter, then uh, I needed to have them available. I couldn't, couldn't cover them with wires or solder. So I had to kind of stay out of the way when I was using the wires on there and then... Uh, very carefully uh, uh, had, to, had to use non-metallic spacers to hold it to the to the metal chassis that I was going to use. So then it was a matter of like what chassis am I going to use? I looked around my shop. Uh, the most sensible would have been and easiest would have probably been uh, a plastic um, chassis because then they're it doesn't matter whether I use metallic or non-metallic spacers or that anything touches it because it's not going to conduct anyway. But uh, I had this old B&K uh, 283 three-digit multimeter that wasn't functioning and uh, I'd already gutted it. The cabinet was in kind of bad looking shape but but all of the key things that I needed were there. I uh, needed two, spot, uh, two spots for potentiometers. I needed uh, spots for the output uh, uh, of the board. Uh, so, you know, for binding posts, I needed at least two there. I needed a place for the meters. And uh, this had a meter slot already in panel, but it was a little bigger than I needed. But uh, decided to go ahead and, and modify that B&K... Uh, chassis it needed paint very badly 
Uh, I cleaned it all up and then decided to go ahead and give it a paint job. Uh, made it different than uh, in the original, uh, kind of an ivory colored metal from the front, bottom, and back. Um, and painted the top black, which is what it was originally. And it actually came out quite nice. Um, and I started, uh, I made a metal plate to cover over the slot that was existing, the larger slot. And, uh, and then I cut the, that plate just big enough so that uh, a lens, red lens that I had that was, I wanted to use to cover those two readouts would fit in it. And uh, then I, I mounted the whole readout board to that plate using non-metallic um, spacers and screws. And, um, and then held it back enough to where I could put the, uh, the lens in place. And uh, then a couple of 10-turn uh, potentiometers with the turn knobs put those on the unit and wired the whole thing up and then tested it and, uh, and it's working fine it looks very nice all right so we have the unit hooked up to a uh, power supply in the back right now I've got the uh, voltage on that supply we'll take her up but close to 30 there was 25.6 volts Right now, I've got the thing so that my current dial is turned all the way down. My voltage is somewhere above zero, but uh, but the current is controlling everything right now. So you see I've got zero current and I've got zero voltage. As I adjust my current, yeah, there we go. Current point zero 0.02 at 2.58 volts. Volts is shown like a U on the top, amps on the bottom. 2.58 volts, 0 0.02. If I go 0 0.03, got 0 0.03 amps at about 3.1 volts, 2 volts. I can go to 4, 5. So I'm controlling my current and the voltage is adjusting appropriately. Now I'm using a 100 ohm uh, 10 watt resistor here. 1% uh, as my load on the output source and by doing that uh, basically um, uh, whatever voltage I read across that 100 ohm resistor is also uh, uh, what the current is it's, it's exactly related to the current going in it and I can compare the, uh, the readout so if I turn on this uh, HP here. And I get my uh, test leads. Alright, so what I've done now is I've connected my uh, my HP 34401A up to my uh, across my 100 ohm resistor which is in series with the output of the power supply. And I'm reading 7.29 volts across the resistor. And I've got 7.29 volts showing on the front panel of this power supply. So that's good. I'm showing 0 0.07 amps uh, going through the uh, 100 ohm resistor. Well, 7.3 divided by 100 would put that at 0 0.07. So yeah, 0 0.07 amps it is with a 100 ohm uh, resistor and I can dial her up let's say uh, 0.10 let's we'll see if we can get it right where 10 comes in all right I'm showing 0.10 right there that's with 10 volts I'm getting 0.1 amps well it's a 100 ohm resistor and with 10 volts uh, across it I've got 0.1 amps I'm expecting to get and I'm reading 9.985, so that's 10 volts across the 100 ohms. Again, uh, 0.1 amp. So that's actually uh, it's reading quite quite nicely. And as I increase my uh, 
amperage. And I allow my voltage, I have to give myself a little more voltage room here. I want to go up to 20 at the... Uh, Alright, so let's see, point 0.1. right at the 10 volt level and if I go to point let's go point two if we can All right, we gotta increase our voltage a little more there's point two right there that's at 20.4 volts I'm getting uh, 20.35 and 0 0.20 amps so yeah that's it's good so the unit is working i can use it as a uh, as a constant current source where the current controls the voltage and that's something i was looking for for testing out resistances and things like that so when i get the power supply we'll uh, we'll install it and we'll check this out further so I got it to a point to where it's looking pretty good and I'm happy with it. I, I want to use it now. So, uh, but I need an internal power supply. Did a little research. Um, I couldn't find a 30 volt. I was able to find 36 volt power supplies, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to use a 36 for fear that I would burn the unit out uh, inadvertently. I did find a 24 volt 6 amp power supply for about $7 on eBay and it's small enough to fit in the cabinet so uh, I've ordered it. I'm going to have to modify my label in the front make this a 0 to 24 volt 5 amp uh, constant voltage constant current power supply but, uh, but as you can see the unit is turning out really quite nicely and my, uh, my power supply should fit on the inside. I have the uh, the top just loosely setting on there at the moment, and uh, got a, bit, a whole lot of space on the inside because that unit that I'm working on is very small. The two pieces, once they're separated, you can see here. Here you see my plastic wings that I mounted to my readout so that I could extend my mounting points outwards to where the metal plate is beyond the where the plastic lens would go. Otherwise, I'd interfere with the lens. Didn't want to do that. Plus, I had to hold the uh, the whole unit inwards a little bit so that the uh, the readout could punch through the front plate and have room for everything to uh, to fit. Uh, here, you can see my uh, my wires acting as my standoff substitutes. The originals were metal standoffs. Okay. And then I've wired my potentiometers up. I took the original pots out very carefully. And then I put in a set of ribbon wires and then wired those up to some 10-turn pots that I have on the front here. And then I have my output. I've got uh, double positive, double black uh, outputs coming from the screw terminals to the binding posts here. The third binding post right at the moment is just a vacant one. I could use it as a possibly a ground for the chassis or something, but basically it covers a hole that existed there. And uh, and these will be the input leads for from my power supply, which will go in this area. And I'll provide a fuse and uh, and a cord to go in the inside. Remove the old uh, three prong. Uh, electrical connector that was here because it was of a type that you can't even hardly buy the cords for anymore. I think the cords are 25 to 50 dollars. So I've repurposed this old uh, this old cabinet and modified this little uh, power unit to be something quite useful. And when I get this whole thing together we'll uh, we'll demonstrate it uh, at that time.